This video is brought to you by Card Kingdom. And while supplies last, if you mention Saffron Olive in your order notes, we'll hook you up with a free Saffron Olive sticker with any Card Kingdom order. Hello everyone, it's Seth, probably better known as Saffron Olive, and it's time for another Instant Deck Tech. So this week, all week, and probably next week too, we are going to be looking at decks featuring new cards from Throne of Eldraine, but there's a bit of an asterisk here. Because this set isn't officially out yet, uh, and it's just coming out over the weekend, these are not tournament tested lists. Instead, these are just like spicy playtest lists that maybe have some potential. Stuff that caught my eye might be worth working with in Standard or Modern featuring Throne of Eldraine. And today, we're looking at a deck from Brian Gottlieb, who you probably know from Star City Games, the Arena Decklist Twitter, the Arena Decklist Podcast. Uh, so super sweet deck builder, super cool guy. And uh, this is Karn's Cauldron, a combo of the Cauldron of Eternity, a card the Great Creator, and a super spicy shell. So a quick reminder before we break down Karn's Cauldron for standard, Throne of Eldraine standard. If you enjoy this deck and you want to see it made to videos, take a minute, click the like button, the subscribe button, leave a comment anything you can do to support your deck because whichever deck is most popular gets a shot at being made into videos next week. So Karn's Cauldron is a Cauldron of Eternity deck. So Cauldron of Eternity, one of our new Throne of Eldraine cards, 12 mana, but it gets two cheaper for each creature in your graveyard. So if you can get five creatures in your graveyard, which is one of the goals of this deck, it's only two mana, and then you can pay three and two life to reanimate a creature only at sorcery speed, and if a creature you control dies, goes on the bottom of your library, which is kind of more of a downside in this deck than an upside, honestly. It keeps you from like uh, sacking creatures, having them die in combat, going back in the graveyard, reanimating them. But the idea of this deck is kind of twofold. First off, we're using the Cauldron of Eternity in the traditional way, which is as a reanimation effect. So to make this work, we obviously need to stock our graveyard really quickly. Uh, we can't cast the Cauldron of Eternity for 12 mana, really trying to get it down to 2 mana. So for this, we have a bunch of cards we can use to mill ourselves. Merfolk Seeker Keeper, Wall of Lost Thoughts, actually, oddly, almost the same card. They are both 0-4s that mill us for 4 cards. Uh, Merfolk Seeker Keeper, a little bit different because you cast it as a sorcery and then again as a 1-drop. Wall of Lost Thoughts, all at once, but regardless, these cards mill four of our cards into our library, hopefully getting creatures in there for the Cauldron of Eternity to reduce the cost and then eventually to reanimate. The other thing about building around Cauldron of Eternity is you need a lot of creatures in an absolute sense. If you don't play enough creatures, you won't get enough in the graveyard. So we also have Emery Lurker of the Lock, which is insane with the Cauldron of Eternity for two reasons. First off, it mills us for four, similar to our wall and our secret keeper, but it also lets us cast artifacts from our graveyard. So we can mill over our Cauldron of Eternity, and then hopefully for two mana with the cost reduction, just tap our Emery, cast it from our graveyard. So this is not only a way to fill our graveyard for Cauldron of Eternity, it's a way to play our Cauldron of Eternity from our graveyard once we happen to mill it. Then we also have Vantress Gargoyle, which is kind of a self-mill card. It's kind of just a big old blocker and possibly attacker, depending on what's going on. And it's another artifact to work with Emery. So with Emery, we really want to be able to have the option to cast an artifact from our graveyard, or we're kind of minimizing her value, Fantris Gargoyle just gives us another cheap and powerful artifact that we can cast once we mill it over. Then we have our reanimation target. So first off, probably the best reanimation target in standard, Agent of Treachery. You play it, you steal your opponent's best thing. It's very powerful, very strong. One of the things we're looking to get back most with the Cauldron of Eternity. We also have Shimmer Dragon, which is a little bit weird, but if we have enough artifacts, it's hexproof. It's also just a really big blocker. I mean, it's a 5-6 for 6. So a big threat in the air, good on defense, thanks to Hexproof, good on offense once we start attacking, assuming we get enough artifacts, and it can even generate card advantage if we want to. Then we have kind of our removal -y reanimation targets. So if our opponent's got something going on, maybe we don't have an Agent of Treachery to steal it, we can always reanimate our Cavalier of Night, sack another creature, destroy our opponent's best creature, and then we can even maybe get back a creature of converted mana cost three or less when it dies. Massacre Girl, on the other hand, uh, just sweeps a board and go wide matchups with a bunch of small creatures, it's pretty much a wrath that leaves behind a 4-4. Also worth pointing out that both of these cards and our deck in general is fairly castable. Like while reanimating ourselves with Cauldron is plan A, we can't just hard cast these for five mana and they're perfectly fine. We also have a bunch of removal options and one of the sweet things about this deck is most of our removal is also creatures, which means when we mill it, it's upping our creature count for our Cauldron of Eternity. We can even reanimate them if we want to. Brazen Borrower, Murderous Rider. So Brazen Borrower bounces, gives us a flyer, murderous rider, 
Hero's Downfall with a little bit of life loss that gives us a nice life-linking creature. We also have one Necrotic Wound, which, with the amount that we mill, is kind of like our Swords to Plowshares. It should, by, like, the mid-turns of the game, turn 3, turn 4, be able to just not only kill, but exile any creature on the battlefield for one mana instant speed. Then we have one copy of Blood for Bones, just kind of a bit of backup reanimation. Doesn't necessarily synergize that well with Cauldron, because Cauldron puts stuff on the bottom when it dies, so when we sack a creature to Blood for Bones, it's going to go on the bottom of our library if we also have Cauldron out, but if we don't have Cauldron, Blood for Bones, backup way to get back our creatures from the graveyard on the cheap. Then we have Karn the Great Creator, and this is probably the sweetest part of the deck. So you're probably wondering, why would you play Karn in this you know, Cauldron of Eternity deck? And the answer is Karn's plus one. Normally when you play Karn, you're playing it to do the wish sideboard thing, being able to tutor artifacts from your sideboard. And while our sideboard is focused on Karn targets, the sweetest part about this is, remember, even when we cast the Cauldron of Eternity for two mana because our graveyard is full, it's a 12 converted mana cost artifact. So Karn comes down, it plus ones, it turns Cauldron into a 12-12 creature, which that is a serious threat. That's like the biggest thing in standard. So we just smash our opponent's face with our Cauldron, beating our opponent down with our big reanimation artifact and then Karn also offers that flexibility of tutoring stuff from our sideboard uh, as far as our mana base water graves fabled passages a bunch of basic lands pretty straightforward also a couple of castles one black one blue just for a little bit of extra value sideboard wise we have more necrotic wounds so we can go up to four necrotic wounds after sideboarding as our cheap removal spell the rest of the sideboard it is all Karn stuff we can grab our fourth cauldron of eternity if we don't happen to find one with our Karn manifold key kind of cute with untapped Pink Cauldron of Eternity to reanimate two things in one turn. Bolus of Citadel, if we just gotta play a bunch of stuff off the top of our deck. Godfarer Statue can lock our opponent out of the game. Then we have some random card advantage stuff. Pattern Matcher, Snags, a copy of a creature that we already have. Golden Egg, Wishing Well, straight up card draw. Wish Claw Talisman, really sweet with Karn. If we have our Karn, when we donate it to our opponent, they're not gonna be able to activate it because it's an artifact they control. So it gets the Stony Silence treatment. So we can tutor this up with Karn, tutor up whatever we want, donate it to our opponent, and have very minimal risk as long as our card's on the battlefield, because our opponent can't tutor anyway. We also have one Stone Coil Serpent, just a big, trampling, reaching, protection-y threat. Otherwise, Sorceress Spyglass for Planeswalker, Scrabbling Claw for our opponent's graveyard, Witch's Oven, if we gotta gain a bit of life, we can sack our stuff to make some food tokens, and that is Karn's Cauldron for Standard. And that's been our instant deck tech for today, so thank you so much for watching, I hope y'all enjoyed the video, and I will talk to you soon. Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, help us out by clicking that like button down below. And to keep up on all the latest and greatest, click that subscribe button. And don't forget to hit that bell icon to get alerts whenever we have new videos. And if you want to, check out some of our other sweet videos here and here.